Hey folks, welcome back for chapter 5 of the Screw Tape Letters. And this one uh, starts out with anxiety, night terrors. Uh, we've all experienced this. Uh, the guy is, uh, the patient, okay, is, is dealing with uh, tremendous anxiety because the European war has started now. And this guy has all kind of wild imaginings about what's going to happen. And the devil is playing upon that. Did the patient respond to some of your terror pictures of the future? You know, we've all experienced uh, these kind of night terrors, uh, I'm guessing. Most of us have woken up in the night and been anxious about things. Uh, but one thing's for sure, we don't think clearly at night. You ever been tormented by night terrors and then you get up in the morning and you're like, that was a nothing burger, you know. Uh, you're brushing your teeth wondering, what the heck was my problem? Okay, we get wild with fear in the middle of the night about all kinds of different things. Uh, yeah, humility helps kind of diffuse that. Uh, we just humble ourselves, admit our limitations. And... <clears throat> Uh, wisdom 17 is, you know, is a, is a great example of like these terrors that come over us in the night. So I like this chapter because it's just a person who's wild with fear. The context for this is the, uh, the great darkness, you know, that was felt, a felt darkness, uh, that the Egyptians ex experienced during the ten plagues. And they were wild with fear. Wild imagining. And sick with ridiculous fear. Um, and fear is nothing. This is an interesting insight here. This is Wisdom chapter 17 verse 12. Fear is nothing but surrender of the helps that come from reason. And the inner expectation of help being weak prefers ignorance of what causes the torment. For throughout the night, which was really powerless, and which beset them from the recesses of powerless Hades. Very interesting. Uh, kind of brings it down to size, cuts it down to size, you know, our wild fears. Um... Psalm 77 is a psalm I like uh, for a couple reasons, but uh, this is a guy who just can't sleep, and he's laying in bed stressed out. Uh, can't, uh, can't sleep. That I was holding my eyelids from closing. Uh, and, you know, he, he's trying to get, uh, you know, get, 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 get a foothold, get a foothold to leverage himself against these wild fears the poor guy has. Um, we've all been there. And what's cool is, I mean, this is a very Jewish reflection or meditation, is to go back, look back in the past. And uh, what's our point of reference as we're going through life? Uh, we see for the Jews, you know, it was the Exodus event. The God saved them. By wondrous deeds, he saved them. That he is their savior. That he did it in the past. Thoughts of God uh, bring reassurance of uh, who God is, reflecting upon God. And that's exactly what they do. Um, this person does. He begins to go back through the Exodus event and recount all God's wondrous deeds and God's very nature. And he finds his fears uh, diminished and uh, kind of ends on a note of trust uh, once again. Uh, so the devil wants to undermine our faith and prevent the formation of virtue in the soul. Uh, that's an interesting statement there that screw tape makes. Um, have their attention diverted from themselves to values and causes causes which they believe to be higher than the self. So there's a danger when a war starts because, you know, people um, uh, be, become focused on something greater than the self. 
and this contented worldliness. Uh, that's what the devil really wants, to just keep us in that state of contented worldliness uh, and lull us to sleep. So war has the effect of uh, snapping us out of that worldly contentedness. Uh, when the bombs start falling and the draft cards start going out, um, look, men are killed in places where they knew they might be killed and to which they go if they are at all of the enemy's party prepared. Okay, so believers who already have a seed of faith, strength it could strengthen their faith uh, because they could kind of like, uh, you know, consolidate their faith uh, before they enter into battle, before they enter into mortal danger. Uh, this could, could consolidate them in their faith. Uh, rather, it'd be better if somebody just died with lies. Everybody lying to them, the nurses, their friends, the doctors, everybody lying to them, uh, telling, promising life to the dying, you know, uh, to deny death, the reality of death is uh, a terrible thing. Uh, to not look and face squarely the question of death is a tactic of the evil one. Because the thought of death is a bucket of cold water to the face, all right? And uh, we don't believe in our own death. We don't want to think about our own death. Uh, but if we be healthy and wise, uh, we will think about it every day. If we be an authentic human being, to be really truly living an authentic human life, you have to face it. Uh, and when we do, for me, the thought of death gives me joy. Uh, you may think that's crazy, but well, the further I get away from the thought of my own death, the more confused I get. Uh, the more I get caught up in this contented worldliness, I start drifting away from God. I, I start drifting away from my true identity and my tr the true meaning and purpose uh, of my life down here. Uh, my mission and, I, and, and destiny uh, begin to kind of, um, you know, Come less clear so death wakes us up to all the fundamental human questions come rushing into our brain dashing against our forehead the moment that bucket of cold water the thought of death hits our face so to me it's hitting the reset button it's the last thing the devil wants us to think about is our death um you know and i love this here he talks about how uh these people who lie to the dying person and tell them you know that uh, they're going to live, promising life to the dying, refuse to face the question of dying of death, of this person's potential imminent death. Um, you know, you, you don't want to call the priest. You don't want to call the priest because you'll upset the person. You know, and make them think about the possibility that they might die. Uh, so that's what families do, and, and, and they're doing it out of charity, but it's, it's really not charitable to do that to the person. Okay? And they wait until the last conceivable moment to call the priest. And we're tearing over there, and sometimes we don't make it in time. You know, They wait until the person's already dead. Then they call the priest. And we go over there, and all we can do at that point is uh, bless the body. But, uh, you know, depends if how recent it, it's been since they died. Uh, so, anyway... Sacraments are for the living, so make sure you get, uh, if you have somebody, a friend, relative who's dying, uh, make sure you call the priest in plenty of time. Um, so anyway, they don't. people are afraid to suggest that a priest come over. They, they don't want them to know their true condition, or they're afraid uh, this will freak them out, because people think, you know, oh, we're the angel of death when we walk in with the Roman collar on. All right, so... Uh, Lastly here, uh, is there anything else? At the precise moment of terror, bereavement, or physical pain, or what we might say mortal danger, you may catch your man when his reason is temporary, temporarily suspended so the devil can get in there and confuse and bewilder us maybe and uh, keep us from thinking about God. But even then, if he applies to enemy headquarters... If he reaches out in prayer to the Almighty, 
I have found, Screw Tape says, that the post is nearly always defended. Until next time, God bless you.